Welcome back. This is Y254 Business Tuesday. Yes, and my name is Vera Masava, and today we are discussing Masters Hospitality and Tourism in Kenya. Are you planning to take a holiday trip this, this festive season? Well, this is the show for you. This is meant specifically for you. And you're going to dive into the discussion and to help me discuss this is two amazing gentlemen who have Brian Wethero on my left. Brian Wethero is an economic analyst and we also have Alfred Mriuki, right, from African Safaris and Destination. Karibuni sana, gentlemen. Yes, yes, Thank let you. me, okay, okay, but first, take this opportunity just to introduce, tell us what you do, how you do it, where we do it, and the, and the name of your company. Let's start with Alfred. Okay, so it's, um, as you mentioned, I'm Alfred Mariuki, CEO and MD, African Safaris and Destinations. We usually do marketing yeah. and um, uh, marketing campaigns for hospitality service providers that is lodges, villas, resorts, hotels, travel agents, and also airlines. Uh, we do that uh, through listing on our website. So we reach out to these um, hospitality service providers mm -hmm. to list on our website, and from there we are able to, to market them. We, we don't really do a lot of, we actually don't do the booking. Many people think that we, mm -hmm. we operate as um, other two agents, but okay. we don't do that for us. It's just a marketing agency. A marketing agency. Yeah. Yes, thank you so much. And Brian, were there? So um, my name is Brian Joroge. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm an economist by profession. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm a, and, and I'm also an entrepreneur, generally doing uh, business in software and uh, data analytics. And therefore, I'm able to interact with uh, both local and international data. That's mm -hmm. where I get most of my insights. OK. Um, uh, Alfred, well, what are your expectations, considering you're from the industry, what are your expectations during this festive season? Uh, we expected a lot of uh, bookings uh, through our website. Actually, as I'm checking through the back end, mm -hmm. I'm finding um, that some of the hotels that are listed with us uh, from the coast are almost now fully booked. Mm -hmm. So we're expecting more people to actually go to the coast be because you know, the, the coast um, at, at, at this uh, festive season, Christmas season, uh, people don't really are not really concentrating on, concentrating on cost. Sorry, mm -hmm. they are just looking at uh, where they can just go and spend just away from their normal lives. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And Brian, uh, do you think uh, domestic uh, tourism uh, has really peaked, or is it still like those days where even local tourism is just a struggle? Um, service providers have to struggle even to negotiate with the, the locals to even give them something, some incentives. Do you think it has really picked up or it's still the same? I believe it has uh, picked up um, extensively because unlike traditionally when we used to have uh, just site viewing, maybe you'd go to game parks mm -hmm. and you watch uh, the animals, the big five. Nowadays, uh, we, we have seen the rise of uh, experiences. Mm -hmm. Like maybe you, you, f you find some people going to zip lining, and those are the kind of things that are now boosting the tourism sector. Mm -hmm. And so I believe the, that domestic tourism has risen and is going to expand into the future. Okay, <laughs> okay, okay. Le le let me let me go back to Alfred. Uh, do 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 domestic? Uh, okay, let me let me put it this way. The only destination locals like it's Mombasa. Are there other destinations that are actually attracting people? Because you find cases like in December, Kilamutu, everyone is just going to Mombasa. You go to the beach, it's fully packed. Are there other destinations where people prefer? Uh, the, the, the destination like Naivasha mm -hmm. or, or Leiden, we have also the uh, Hippo Camp. Uh, they, they are very, very nice places for, for people to go and just have a good time. Mm -hmm. So I think um, it's slowly breaking from people just, um, you know, wanting to go to Malindi and the South Coast and all that. And it's now going to Na Na Naivasha. Naivasha is, um, of late, has been uh, really um, uh, rising and boosting those de destinations, mm -hmm. especially in camping. People are really enjoying camping a bit because I've ever been there in such a, mm -hmm. an adventurous place to be. So M Mombasa, uh, slowly, uh, apart from December, where many people flock there, mm -hmm. uh, we have in Naivasha coming up, and also Nakuru, and also sides of uh, uh, Nanyuki, on your way to Nanyuki, mm -hmm. like Anka, Anka Resort. There's so many nice places over there. Okay. Yeah. 
So Naivasha, Mombasa, Nakuru, we have also Mount Kenya. Sure. Yes, Mount, uh, Mount Kenya. Okay, Do you, is it advisable, Alfred? Is it advisable in the in economical aspect? Is it advisable for guys to go on holiday for December or they can go during other seasons? When it's low season, I know there's peak, right? Mm -hmm. There's peak and there's low. So you feel the reason is why people have been uh, going to Mombasa, mm -hmm. and actually, when you think of vacation in Kenya, Mombasa is the first, maybe the first destination in your mind. Mm -hmm. It's because for a long time, tourism in Kenya has been based on, on the natural resources, uh, where, whereby it, it's just the tourist attraction. Mm -hmm. You go to maybe the Hell's Gate, you go and hike. But now, you realize that as, as the experiences are rising, mm -hmm. people now want to go and release. And therefore, if, if, if at all you don't have to go and visit a site, you can go and have uh, new experiences. For example, zip lining. Mm -hmm. Something like zip lining, someone can go anytime, right from January through December. And therefore, I, I believe right now you, you cannot just recommend someone to go during the festive season. Mm -hmm. They can go anytime for as long as you are ready mm -hmm. and you are able. <laughs> but you know, traditionally, we locals prefer enjoy during this December. And during this season, actually, it's expensive, Alfred, right? Yeah, very expensive because um, also the, 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 the service providers in hotels mm. would want also to control the traffic that is coming uh, to, their, to their facility. So even for them, hiking may not be necessary to, you know, to increase the profit, but also to, to control the, the traffic. Yeah. Okay. Mm. The, we have had counties like Nyeri County, which has done, has published books, made documentary, uploaded them on YouTube, updated their website. They, is what they are doing is just marketing their destination. Uh, do you think other, other counties or other destinations have done the same thing as well, marketing their destination to attract actually even local tourism, not necessarily the, the people coming from outside, but from locals? I think not all counties have done the, the marketing because now the drive to have counties uh, uh, gear, gear their tourism sector mm -hmm. is just uh, it's at its in infant level, maybe in the second or third year. Mm -hmm. And therefore most counties are maybe, especially in central Kenya, mm -hmm. where we do not have many natural attractions compared to maybe Rift Valley and western Kenya. Mm -hmm. So now you, you cannot just start marketing until you have identified what are you going to market. Mm -hmm. So I believe uh, those that have already market, marketed, those who, those who had uh, clear attractions, and others are continuing to look for areas. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, last year, that is 2018, the tourism, uh, Kenya tourism earning rose to at least 157 billion shillings. Uh, do you expect uh, this year to rise depending uh, compared to last year, or it will be just the same or lower, especially during this season? Well, um uh, I might not say yes or no, mm. um, taking into consideration the, the harsh economic times that we have experienced in 2019, especially in businesses. So um, many people might not have a, a lot to spend. So um, yes or no, uh, but uh, that has been a very harsh economically. Okay, and mm. what should be done to locals to attract, for, to attract them to go to this destination? Should they be given incentives like Cabri? buy two, buy, get one free, something like that. I think also the government, uh, we, we also need government incentives, you know, because uh, when you look at uh, Magical Kenya, it also needs uh, to, to boost the small medium enterprises uh, in, the, uh, in the business, uh, in the tourism sector. Because on the ground, um, you'll find that uh, uh, these small uh, travel agents are mm -hmm. really doing a lot mm -hmm. to take people to these destinations. So if the government can only bo boost them and not just concentrate on, um, you know, uh, uh, big ideas, but come to the ground and be able to uh, to boost those SMEs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, yes, you want to add something? Yeah. Got something to Okay. I, I believe uh, the decline, if, the, if at all there will be a decline, for which uh, I'm, I'm very doubtful, in the general performance of the tourism industry mm -hmm. would not depend on the state of the current economy because the domestic tourism isn't the only source of revenue for the tourism sector. Okay. Uh, uh, recent, uh, in the recent years, you, you, we have seen the government trying to promote uh, other uh, aspects of tourism. For example, we have the 
conventions whereby now you're going to attract business tourism. And that one has really grown. Mm -hmm. And therefore, whereas the consumer expenditure might be low, at, uh, which means a decline in domestic tourism, mm -hmm. uh, maybe the international tourism uh, might not uh, decline. Okay. Yeah. You brought up something very interesting, uh, and I will jump into conference tourism. We've, we've had so many meetings, especially this year, we've had so, so many international meetings. Although Rwanda is, has overtaken us in that, yeah. but we've had a lot of tour, conference tourism where we have meetings, they're using our hotels, using our destination, our conferences and everything else. Uh, is that a boost to our economy? First of all, uh, I want to talk about Rwanda. Yeah. I don't believe Rwanda has overtaken us. Okay. Because in the current, uh, in the recent uh, uh, report from the World mm -hmm. Forum, the World Economic Forum, yes. Kenya ranks uh, at position 82 in terms of uh, tourism and travel competitiveness. Okay. And it is number six in Africa, whereas Rwanda is uh, above 100, position 100. So it's still, it's still, Kenya is still a competitive destination, mm -hmm. uh, far, far above Rwanda. Mm -hmm. And so therefore I don't believe that uh, we are somewhere below Rwanda. <laughs> also, yeah. also uh, I, appreciate, I appreciate the fact that uh, especially the, the, the conference in the, the conference at tourism has uh, diversity. Mm -hmm. Now going to, 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 to counties, I've seen that in Kisumu in 2021 they will be hosting the, the Afri Cities Summit which will host uh, the, around 10,000 delegates, which is a good idea. And they can also go to other counties mm -hmm. so that they can cover up all, all the areas that might have a, a, a potential into boosting tourism. OK, let yeah. me just take you back. What should be done to, to create demand during low seasons? What should be done? What should be given? What, should, what are those incentives that should be <laughs> given to, to domestic, especially to locals, to, to, to increase the demand during low season, especially during January, February? I think it's just to, um, to, to do more campaigns uh, to, to remove this narrative that tourism is just for foreigners and to take advantage of uh, what, uh, uh, what the environment has to offer and what uh, the domestic um, tourism has to offer. Mm. Because many people have this uh, mentality that, that tourism is just for the Wazungus. Yeah, yeah mm. sure. <laughs> so if they're, if they're only told that, uh, and also mm. um, made to identify um, affordable affordable places uh, to go and, uh, you know, uh, enjoy themselves. Okay. You, you, during this low season, uh, Brian, during, mm. during this low season, you could find some hotels, a closing shop. Was their planning wrong? Or wh what is the issue? Why do they close down during these seasons? In the low season, you realize that uh, the competition also in the industry is very stiff. Mm -hmm. so, so sometimes now, during the low season, as you're calling it, it means that now the demand for the tourism services is low, especially now for the for experiences and natural viewings. But now for the, the few uh, businesses that target the business class, tourism, they are not uh, very many. Mm -hmm. So we have a, a bigger chunk of our uh, tourism industry targets the, the sightseeing, mm -hmm. the experiences. And therefore, when people are not in the mood, in the mood for uh, all the, the atmosphere does it, uh, is not encouraging for those uh, experiences, mm -hmm. you expect that they don't have any other way mm -hmm. to attract tourism. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Alfred, there have been cases of fake agents, you know, they lure the, the wazungus, they you call them, they, they lure the wazungus, they tell them, as we are reliable agents, you know, just come in, but you have to pay 50%. And once they arrive in Kenya, if it too, you guys disappear. <laughs> and how is it affecting others as well? Because I know these affect others. They, they, will, they will end up to be a trust issue, you guys will not trust you. How is it affecting the other stakeholders? Of course, um, uh, it, it makes um, the, 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 the consumers, those consumers, mm. um, lose confident, uh, confidence even in, uh, on the authentic mm. uh, uh, travel agents. And it's very, very unfortunate. And the government uh, needs to uh, put uh, strict measures against uh, such people. And that's where we have uh, the Kenya Tourism Board and coming up with policies so that uh, we, we can also, for, for the authentic ones like us, African survivors, nations have... But is it doing enough? 
it, it, it's uh, not really doing enough because uh, the, the, some of these businesses are even uh, briefcase businesses, mm. which is very unfortunate because once they have done that, even being traced becomes even impossible. So also the government uh, needs to put strict measures, especially the Kenya Tourism Board, mm. uh, to actually uh, make sure that uh, these agents um, have got uh, the, the licenses, okay. uh, the respective licenses to operate their businesses, and also the businesses should be registered. Yeah. Okay, the final comments, Brian, as we end the show. Final comments to guys, where can they go? Should they, how much they should spend? <laughs> well, I believe, I believe uh, as I know, they deal, they deal um, to, to touring activity is experiences. Because now we, we, we have been having, I, I don't know why I'm like against the natural, I'm not against generally, <laughs> but I believe now it's time we, we uplift the experiences. Yeah. There are so many camping sites. There are, there are places you can go in. For example, in the Muru, yeah. there is this, uh, the mud, something your people are racing in the mud. Mm. And I've seen it has a, a very high traffic. So those are, those are the kind of things people should try over the, the holiday. But the destination should come up with these creative things as well. Okay. Uh, so I might also add to what he has said that okay. uh, we need to diversify uh, our, our marketing for tourism and look at um, um, music tourism, sports tourism, culinary tourism, mm -hmm. you know, cultural tourism, like uh, um, the, there was this, uh, there's this uh, Turkana cultural festival. These festivals are very good. They can also be uh, a very good boost for tourism, especially music tourism, now that it's been given too much concentration here. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And how can people reach you? How can people contact you? Can you mention your social media handles as well and your website? Okay. Mm. You can just visit our website. That is africansafaris.com. Yeah. On uh, Twitter and Instagram is African. Uh, underscore safaris and Facebook is African safaris and destinations. Okay. Yeah. Brian, how can people contact you? Uh, on social media, uh, I go by the name BN Brian mm -hmm. and they can also reach us through the company website that is convenience.co.ke. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much, guys, for my time to join me. Well, yes. Yes, that was Brian with her, that is economic analyst. And uh, Alfred Muriuki, a CEO of African Safaris. Yes, my name is Miriam Masaba, and with that marks the end of the show. Till next time, God bless you, good night, and see you. The buzz is up next. <laughs>